But some people have desperately tried to find in 1 John 5.20 a reference to Jesus as the only true God. This, of course, would make two only true gods, which is in itself very complex. The word only, monos in Greek, excludes everybody not included in the phrase. So when you say that the Father is the only one who is true God, you're saying something exactly parallel to the proposition that the President, currently Obama, is the only one who's currently President of the USA. The word only we all know, a child of two knows, excludes everybody else. There was only one boat there, it says in the Gospels. No one's going to argue there were really two boats. So if the Father is the only one who is truly God, it must by definition mean that nobody else is. Of course that is, that is remains logical and un unassailable. It's simply impossible on ordinary language to include another one as the only true God. However, in 1 John 20, you do have this final statement uh, from John the Apostle, writing in the epistle here. He says, We know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding. As the yanya, that's the highest intellectual word you can find in the Greek language. The whole point of the Son is he gave us an understanding that we might know him who is true and immediately your ear is picking up on John 17 3 where Jesus had said that the Father is the only one who is true God and we are in him in that only one who is true God by being in his son well of course the son is the mediator the son is the one who introduces us to that only true God then he goes on to say this is the true God and eternal life it's almost exactly the same statement as John 17 3 Henry Alford the great Trinitarian expositor was forced to write with great passion that there's no difference at all between these two statements. Both are exactly the same proposition. Now be careful with the antecedents here. An antecedent is the word uh, preceding a given noun. And if you are going to insist on an exact logical antecedent, you're going to have to insist that the Christ is the Antichrist. You'll find that in 1 John 2.22. You'll find the phrase, this is the Antichrist. Well, he's just referred to Christ. And if you look in 2 John 7, you'll find the same phenomenon. So John has a looseness about his use of the antecedents. And so it's obvious in 1 John 5.20 that he's not now suddenly, out of the blue, presenting a second eternal God himself. This would destroy the whole of the rest of Scripture, and particularly the Shema, the Unitarian Creed of Jesus himself.